Society Workshop. And the, theme... the third session of the 10th parliament resumed on Tuesday with a handful of members in the chambers. The Peter Speaker Jacob Olanya, who chaired the sitting, gave a recap of 2017 and highlighted some of the critical issues Parliament should focus on in the new year. He condemned the violent scenes witnessed in the second session, especially during the debate and passing of the Constitutional Amendment Bill No. 2 of 2017, which, among others, removed the presidential age limit from the Constitution. President William Seven has since signed the Act of Parliament, meaning it's now law. Olanya noted that the government side in Parliament, uh, the opposition and party whips in Parliament should dialogue on the contentious issues before they are tabled in the House. That the government side, the opposition side, and independent members coexist because they need each other and cannot live or act in isolation. We always advocated for discussion on the floor of Parliament so that we come to consensus, so that we come to dialogue and then finally at the end of the day, those who win take the day. Where we have weaknesses, sometimes we do accept. But the opposition does not see any good in us. We have the people's mandate, and for everything we do, we mean well. But if we adhere to the law, if we learn to listen to one another, this country will accommodate all of us, it will accommodate all views, and we shall be on the path to progress. Even after he called for dialogue, the deputy speaker said much in the West MP Alan Sewanyana, his Kawempe South counterpart Mubarak Munyagwa and Jonathan Oduro of Erute South will have to serve their suspension of seven sessions from parliament until Wednesday next week. This means their suspension still stands and they are expected to return to parliament on Wednesday 17th. But other MPs Ibrahim Semujung and of Kira Municipality, Ntunga Municipality's Jared Karuhanga, and Nathan Akol of Clark North, who were suspended for three sessions will return tomorrow. Speaker Rebecca Kadaga suspended the MPs for reportedly violating the rules of procedure during the age limit debate in the late December 2017. The MPs have since challenged the Speaker's decision in court. Meanwhile, Parliament tasked State Minister for Health Saro Pendi to explain the suspected outbreak of Congo Crimean hemorrhagic fever in Nakaseke district. This was after Nakaseke South MP Lutamaguzi Semakula accused the health ministry of handling the matter in a casual manner. This disease started in early September and so far 22 people have been confirmed with it out of, out of which 8 have been confirmed dead. Why are the 22 people cordoned off in Nakaseke? What is the reason? If it's not Crimean fever, tell us the reason. For it is not proper for any other person to come up and communicate information that is not correct. Right, Honorable Speaker, we should not alarm the population. Point of order. But you are not in order to say uh, nobody else can talk about this matter. Can I come up here with a statement? Maybe tomorrow. That's a clarification. Can I come here with a statement? Clarification. Last week, Nakaseke district leaders claimed that one person suspected to have contracted the disease had been put under isolation. In the same sitting, Parliament also honoured the late retired Archbishop of Church of Uganda, Livingstone Impala Nkoyoyo, for his contribution to the church and nation building. Nkoyoyo was buried on Tuesday afternoon at the Anglican Matters Shrine in Namugongo. Hubbard Ziwa, NTV at Parliament. One of the challenges Parliament has faced in the past is the slow pace at which government brings business on the floor of the House. And it is upon this background that the Speaker has called for more action and implementation of parliamentary resolutions in this new session. Hubbard Ziwa, NTV at Parliament.